Hello and welcome again to Joy in Our Town. I'm Vijoya Chapelier. My first guest today is Ms. Daryl Richardson. She's the director of a nonprofit organization called the Me Nobody Knows, which enriches the lives of young people in many ways through the creative and performing arts. Well, we're going to find out how the young people in New York are responding to this incredible program. And, Daryl, we're going to find a lot more about your experience. Awesome. When I get to sit across from someone who has choreographed uh, you know, m for the king of pop, Michael Jackson, I get very excited. It doesn't happen very often. Actually, I was the assistant choreographer, just to give credit where credit is due. Well, and if we can skip ahead to that, you've not only choreographed for Michael Jackson, but also you've been on Broadway, you've danced at the Academy Awards, you've danced at the Grammys, uh, you were the lead choreographer and featured in the Paula Abdul Scat Cat video, which some of us remember when it actually came out. Uh, your, ex your experience is so impressive and extensive, and yet here you are, pouring yourself out and your experience into the lives of young people. How have you seen children and young people respond to participation in the arts? It's amazing what the arts can do in children. First of all, when I share what I have done, that gets their attention. It got my attention. <laughs> so that's how I grasp their attention initially. And then tapping into finding out what it is that they want to do. And each child is individual. Each child has natural gifts, abilities, and talents. And my job, and it's a passion for me, I can recognize that in children. And isn't that, you said something so simple that we often overlook. What's right for that child? Exactly. We so, sometimes, uh, you know, in our best efforts, we lump kids all together in one class. Everyone goes to gym. Everyone goes to chorus. Everyone goes, you know, to be in the band and play something. But how do you recognize the individual talents of a child? Well, my first question, anytime I do a mentoring session, a dance class, before I get before children, my first question to individual kids is, what do you want to be when you grow up? I want you to tell me that, your name, how old you are, what do you want to be when you grow up? And they have to think about that. Some of them know, some of them don't. But as we get into discovering that, that's how we can really tap into those specific things with each child. What are some of the examples that you can share with me? Because you've, had, you've taught so many kids these days. I mean, some of the kids come in and they're so withdrawn. And, and I'm really on the verge of clinical depression. Absolutely. And so because my background is in the industry, part of that was doing commercials. And so I also start with teaching them how to slate. And what does that look like? Hi, my name is Daryl Richardson. And really having energy, knowing how to project, not having your shoulders slumped, body posture, how you enter a room, and actually mocking that out, doing that with these kids, coming on the line, standing, looking at me, looking at me in my eyes and speaking to me. So many kids don't do that. They look down and they're... They have a lot of issues going on, but having those kind of exercises helps to bring those children out. Mm. And you offer so many classes in your particular... Uh, All genres of dance, knows. jazz, modern, ballet, liturgical, African, tap, step. And then we do the acting component as well. There's vocals. We do modeling. You know, there's some kids that want to do modeling. So anything they want to do, we will find an avenue for them to be able to, a platform for them to be able to execute that. And you also take your program into the schools. Tell into us a little bit schools. more about what you do I've been do in over that. 16 schools throughout the New York area. Currently, I am at the Catherine and Count Basie Middle School 72 in Queens. I'm also at PS48 in Queens and PS30 in Queens. And those principles have recognized the importance of the performing arts for welcoming me in there with my program. Because a lot of times people think the arts is, oh, you know, that's just extracurricular. What they don't realize, it, it's really shaping and molding these children for their future. Well, just to share on the conversation, my mother was a music teacher for many years. And when the budget goes down, the music program was the first to get cut. Absolutely. And that's unfortunate. And it still is doing that. Dance programs, performing, any kind of performing arts, drama, acting, anything is the first thing to go when the budget goes. But what they don't realize is how it's affecting the children. It's detrimental to them because they need an avenue. They need a way to express themselves freely, honestly, and, and, and openly. And kickball just isn't for everyone. No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> well, so many studies have shown that participation in music and the arts, it increases a child's, uh, not only their social capabilities, but it also increases their test scores. Absolutely. Why do you think that is? Well, because basically the arts teaches memorization as well. It teaches them discipline. It's one of the greater disciplines, I believe. And so when you get kids focused 
in a particular area, they can then take that and apply it to their studies, book reports, when they're slating, when I teach them how to slate, that, that can help them stand in front of a classroom and do an oral presentation of a book report for memorization of classwork, studying to, to take tests and so forth. So I really do believe it does have an impact. I have seen proof that it does with these children. And for someone who may not be in the business, may not know quite what a slate is, explain what that is and why that is so important. Well, in the commercial world and theatrical world, when you go for an audition in front of a casting director, they're going to ask you to slate. That's the terminology. You stand on the X in the room. There's a camera there. You tell them your name, your agency, um, what your, your interest, whatever they ask you, and then they want to see your profile. They want you to see, turn both ways, and then you turn back to the camera and smile. And so just that little X exercise teaches these kids how to find that in them. Half the kids don't walk around smiling. A lot of them are very bitter and depressed because of situations at home or the pressure they're dealing with in school. So to be able to have an outlet like that is so freeing for them. Well, and the kids who are, are struggling, we're not just talking about one socioeconomic stratus. This really yeah. transcends Across any class, board. race, gender, Absolutely. every single thing. And, and considering this, a, a slate is really an introduction to who you are. Think about it. These kids don't want to introduce themselves, yes. period. Exactly. So how are they supposed to survive when they exactly. get out into the big, bad, mean world? And how do they know who they are? This exactly. helps them know, okay, my name is this. I want to be this when I grow up. And then the other thing I ask them, what, what are you good at? What do people compliment ooh, you ooh, on? Oh, people have such a hard time answering that. I love that you do that. Oh my what are some, tell me about what some of the responses you get when you first ask oh, that question. Oh, I love to dance, and this is when that's yeah. right in my pocket. Right, I love right. to dance. I love to sing. You do? Let me hear you sing. On the spot. Because I work with Tyler Perry in Woman That Are Loose, and one of the things that happened when we were rehearsing, he literally called somebody on the phone and had them audition over the telephone and hired them. And so I use that as a premise when I talk to my kids. The reason why I say, sing for me right there, or dance for me right there, because you never know how your life can be changed from this moment on. Mm -hmm. I could be casting something, you don't know that, and so I tell them that story with Tyler, and then they're like, I want to sing, I want to sing, you know, and then they get motivated. So it really is teaching them to be ready at all times. At all times. Isn't that In something? every season, always being ready. Because you never know what life is going to bring your way. And you must be prepared. And so I'm teaching them life skills and preparation for them to move forward. Even though they're, some of them are four. <laughs> some of them are seven. Some of them are ten. Some of them are fifteen. doesn't matter. I use this foundation with every child. And you'd be surprised about the three-year-olds. They have more conversation than some of the 12 and 13-year-olds. That's sometimes, it's amazing. That's my favorite group oh between the goodness. three and five. They're, they're old enough where you can understand what they're saying. And boy, they come up with some questions. They and do. they can carry on a conversation right. with you. It's amazing to me. So it's never too early and it is never, never too late. Some adults. Yeah. Some adults are doing some jobs that they really are not happy about. And, you know, they just were forced into that. So really, you know, the creative arts really helps people find their authentic identity Absolutely. and have the courage to go and walk in it. And have the courage to walk and live in it. That's correct. Now, mentoring is a big deal. And you also have a book called Mentoring. Mentoring the, the Me Nobody Knows. That's right. The company is called The Me Nobody Knows, and the book is called Mentoring the Me. The me and them that no one knows, their talents, their gifts. Even sometimes they don't know it until they get out there for me to teach them. I'm like, you're really good at that. And they're like, I am. And then it builds self-esteem, it builds confidence, respect for self and others, recognizing other kids so there's never any competition because I don't like doing that. The book covers everything we're discussing. It's like a full-on mentoring session with me in a work-study book. What are some tips that you can give us uh, so that really any of us could become a successful mentor to a One young person? One of the person? things that's really important that I find is recognizing the different learning styles in children. There are nine different learning styles, but technically they're only talking about four or five. Right. That's in the book. Because some kids don't learn the same way. And then you find, well, this one is slow. No, this one is not slow. Their intelligence is different. And they have multiple intelligences on how they learn. And so that's how I try to de determine each child I work with. I don't just put them in a group. I figure out how they learn. And so that's very important. 
Well, some people learn best when they're when they can hear a lecture. Yes. Some people or learn best, you know, let's say if you get a new electronic device. I don't want to read a manual. I want you just to show to me show how, me to, how do to do it. it. So exactly. That's the perfect example mm. of what I'm talking about. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, what are some of the other things that we can do, let's say that we wouldn't think about uh, on a daily basis? Talking to your kids about their what they want to do, their future. This is so simple, but it's so profound. I have a vision board section in my book. Writing a vision board, what does that look like? Going through magazines, tearing out pictures of careers. You know, and even at five year olds, we want to we show these kids that you can be a lawyer, a doctor, a singer, an actor, an architect, a writer, an author, a teacher. Just the vast uh, opportunities that are out there. And I have a section in the book called Careers from A to Z. So if you don't know what you want to do, guess what? I have a list in the book that you can go through and figure it out. There are options. There are. Oh, that's wonderful. So that you're just not forced into something because your mom was a nurse. And there's nothing wrong with nursing. Mm -hmm. That's a wonderful field. But sometimes your child is not made created to be that. Mm -hmm. Perfect example, I have an 18-year-old daughter who used to take dance classes with me up until she was in the eighth grade. I thought she was going to be a professional dancer, and she told me, Mommy, no, I want to do fashion. She's now at FIT, majoring in fashion merchandising, and I had to let her do that because it was my vision to be a dancer, not hers. And so now that she's tapped into that, oh, I'm encouraging her all the way. And so I encourage parents to find out what your children want to do because that's the passion. And when you're passionate about something, you'll succeed at it. And you just hit on a key point. There's a possibility for someone to become a stage parent. Oh, Talk yes. to that person who is determined that their child is going to be a thus and so because they wanted to be the thus and th right. so, but it's not going to happen. Could you just speak to that? Yeah, for a you moment? cannot vicariously live through your children, and sometimes it's out of frustration, and I can understand that. But find out, let your children do and be what they want to be and do. And the in inadequacies of not allowing that to happen can be very detrimental to the child because then the child can get very, uh, she can, you know, just be. Um, not being obedient, you know, a operating and acting out in disciplinary actions that are not fa favorable. She can be rebel, he or she can become rebellious when you're forcing them to do something. But if they have the gift to do it, then of course enhance it. But if they really don't want to do it, you don't make them. You have so much experience that you've brought to us. I can't even, we don't even have time to talk about everything that you've done. You've been with Earth, Wind and Fire, Barry White, Jamie Foxx, you've performed pretty much from the ends of the earth and we're so grateful that you took the time to talk with us today. You have so, you so much more much. information at your website. We hope people will make a point to get in touch with you, maybe book you for one of their schools and yes, bring I you to workshops. talk to their children. Absolutely. I mean, I, my, that's my passion, reaching fantastic, out to these kids. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Daryl. It's you. been a pleasure to Absolutely. have you here today. Great. Okay, everyone, this is what you're going to do to help reach out to your young people, get them involved in creative and performing arts. But don't go anywhere because I'll be back right after this to talk about more ways that New Yorkers are reaching out to the youth of New York. So